Hi everyone and welcome back to yet another video. Following this last week video where I made these two queuings out of old CPUs, my plan for today is to expand on that and start building some queuings out of uh, PCBs like this one. This one came from an old printer. Uh, it no longer works. The printer is disassembled and I'm keeping this uh, for sorts of parts scavenging, but uh, I'll try to repurpose these boards now and remove sections of it where I'll use the SMD components in some of the areas that are on the board to make some carings. The idea is that we first start by removing the true hole components and from there on we'll see how we're gonna cut the board and how we're gonna uh, turn them into carings. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. When you're building electronic devices, the quality of the built piece is entirely dependent on the quality of its PCB. This is why I use the services of PCBWay for my prototypes, where I get low volume of boards extremely quickly for an unbeatable price. Check PCBWay to get your PCBs professionally manufactured. Since these boards are being soldered with uh, lead-free solder, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some, so, uh, some low melt solder to uh, the truth of coal components on the bottom side and I'll then use my hot air gun to start removing some of the components or even I'll try to remove them you know, using the regular soldering iron but that might be tricky because of the solder and its uh, high melting point and we'll see how it goes. So basically the easiest way that I found so far to remove the component is to heat up both of the leads if possible, like in the case with this capacitor, wait a few seconds so the solder starts to melt and then we can start to pull on that capacitor uh, gently one leg at a time and also heat the pads as we do so until the capacitor is then freed from the board. Uh, the capacitors do get a little bit hot, but it's no problem uh, to hold them. And same as with this in inductor, the pads are quite far apart for me to heat them both efficiently at the same time. So I'll heat one leg up and then slightly pull on it then heat the other one pull on it and so on and so on until the component is freed from the board let's see what else okay so not much remaining here in terms of uh through hole components we can see that some of the legs are still remaining on the inductors okay it seems that we've pulled them out of the plastic that's no big deal let's try and remove some of these um, connectors the problem with them is that they are plastic so i'll try to heat both of the pads at the same time and try to pull at the same time so one of the legs remained and for that we're gonna need some pliers i'll grab the leg with the pliers heat it up again and remove it from the board and i'll do the same from the ones that i have remaining with some of the connectors it's a bit more tricky to get them removed like for example with this one here because they do have a lot of pins and there is no way for me to get to all of those pins using the soldering iron so what i've did i've added some low melt solder there and now i'll be using my hot air gun to start hitting them all up and then i can uh, pull the connector through the other side so let's try that i'll i'll grab the connector from the bottom 
making sure not to touch the PCB because it's gonna get hot and I'll grab the hot air gun and start heating it up. So I removed the connector but two of the pins remain on in the board and I'll use the soldering iron for those two. If you pull the legs out, out of some of the connectors like this one here, we can still uh, reuse them if you want to keep them. And what you can do is grab one of the legs and then just reinsert it into the hole and then gently push on it. And we can do the same with the third one. It doesn't really matter uh, what leg came from what connector because they are mostly uh, the same. And you can clean up the pad, the legs here from the solder and you still have a usable connector uh, if you want for some other projects. And here is the board after the cleanup has been completed. So you can see that I've removed all of the connectors. I've removed all of the through hole components that mostly we had here. I removed the connectors and the slots for the cards that we had here. So basically anything that was sticking up too much from the board is now removed. There are a few components, mainly in this area here that I still left. We'll see how that goes. Maybe later on we will remove them depending on how the keyrings feel. And also I have decided to keep some of the smaller resistors and diodes that are through hole uh, on the board, but I think that they look nice. So I'll leave them there. On the back side, you can see that we don't really have anything sticking up. So I also made sure to trim up all the legs that uh, were from the through hole components. So nothing really catches on the finger or nothing really catches, uh, will catch in the pocket later on when we turn this into uh, curings. So the idea here is that we'll try to divide this board into sections. Uh, so I plan to basically divide it uh, in the same size as this one. So let's grab the marker and we'll try to find some areas of interest. Um, so what I was thinking at first is that maybe I use this entire chip over here as one of the keying. So that might be interesting. Um, additionally, I think a good line to split this board would be somewhere around here and we can then extend this cut through here and maybe even extend it here. Uh, again, I'm trying to devise this board into sections that I think might look uh, interesting. Also, I think that somewhere around here, it's good. And this is basically, this is entirely dependent on what you want to achieve and how big of keyrings that you want to get. Um, this particular piece of the board is really interesting because of this component here. So I want to keep that and maybe address that in a future video because I found it interesting. I've never before seen a component like this. Um, what else? This area here is particularly interesting, but it's difficult to be split up. Uh, because I think that this over here may be too much. Um, we'll see. I'll try here. Uh, where else? Here. Maybe. And we may keep it right here before. So it, it will be a bit bigger, but we can always trim it uh, a little bit smaller. Um, what else? There is a, like a section here and a section here, I think that might be interesting. 
and with these cuts so I'll try to make this something like this and we'll see how it goes so this this is just to give me a general uh, overview now let's go to the workshop and start cutting the PCB and start producing some curings And here we are back to the bench with the final product. As you can see, this turned out really nice. Some of them have really nice features that highlight part of the board. So in some of them, I've drilled some holes uh, to slip the carings, but some of them had already holes inside that were used to mount the original board and I reused some of them. Um, I wasn't sure how I'm gonna like the ones that are with irregular shape, but it turns out that I like them more than the ones that have the like rectangular shape. I didn't bother that I make these really precise because um, there is definitely no need to uh, for them to be precise, but I tried to keep them uh, as square as possible and some of them turned out nicer than the others like for example this one i'm not really happy with how that turned out maybe if i have left a little bit more uh, from the pcb on the side it would have looked nicer like for example here where you can see the traces coming off but still it's a nice little keying uh, that i think will definitely be a conversation starter to be honest, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with so much curings. Probably I'll share them with my friends. And we definitely made quite a lot of curings from that single board. Uh, depending on the area, you can see that all of them turned out uh, different. Some of them have some nice features, like for example, on this one. Yeah, so even on the side, we have some of the uh, through hole components that were soldered in and we see the solder bridges and on some of them we can also see the vias that go through the board depending on where the pcb was cut like for example here there is one via that you can see here and also on the other ones as well so that that makes it interesting to see how the board was functioning originally um, some like this one turned out really small but uh, i think that some people might like that as well uh, definitely there are no major features here but this whole uh, via pattern that's uh, on this ground plane uh, looks interesting what else i mean there are definitely 
really interesting one and nice ones. So that's about it for today. I really had some fun making this ones and I think that they turned out really nice. Let me know down in the comments if you think that the idea is interesting or if you have any other ideas on how we can make some nicer keyrings. I have some of these uh, key chains left so I can try and experiment with something. Also, let me know down in the comments if you have any idea what else I can do with this one. If maybe you are interested in purchasing them. So uh, let me know and we'll try to figure out together. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.